Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about controllers. Specifically, we're going to look at the tab controller, the scroll controller, and we also want to look at a widget called the nested scroll view. This tutorial is going to be fairly UI centric, so let's just build out the basic scaffold for this application first, and then we will start to talk about the various different functionalities that we get with these controllers. For the boilerplate, we have our material app, then we have this stateful widget here, which builds out an empty scaffold. Generally, when you want to use tabs inside of your application, you wrap your scaffold in a default tab controller. You specify the length for both of the tabs. So in this case, we have two tabs, so length will be two. Then you put your scaffold in here and you have your app bar. You can have a bottom here with the tab bar widget inside of it. And in here, you define the actual tab icons and stuff at the top of the page. And then for the body, you wrap your two pages in a tab bar view so that you can tab between the pages using the buttons at the top. For this example, I also brought in all of the wallpapers that we were using in the last tutorial so that we could fill out the actual pages for our application. So down here we have page one, which just builds out assets photo wallpaper one.jpg with a width of 300. And then we have page two, which also builds out an asset this time it builds out wallpaper 2.jpg with width of 300. So here you can see our application. It's fairly basic. We've got our two tabs. Each one has an icon and then text underneath of it. And we can tab between the two pages fairly seamlessly. This is a perfectly acceptable way of creating a tab based application. However, if you want to have more flexibility and you want to have more functionality, there is a different way to go about doing this. So for now, I'm just going to comment out all of this stuff up here, and then we'll just work with our scaffold like this and build out a new sort of dynamic tab system. Now, before we continue building out our user interface, we want to do a few things at the top of our state class. We need to bring in the single ticker provider state mixin so that we can animate our scroll controller and tab controller and we also want to instantiate a tab controller and a scroll controller. So at the top here, I'll create the tab controller and the scroll controller. And then we will override in its state here. And I will set up the tab controller by instantiating tab controller, adding in a vsync tag. So we want this tab controller to be synced to the frame rate of the screen. And then we want to specify the amount of tabs that we're going to have in this tab controller, which will be two. For the scroll controller, we just need to instantiate a scroll controller, at least for now. There are a few other options that we can add to it, and we'll go through those in a bit. With most controllers inside of Flutter, you also want to override the dispose function and make sure to properly dispose of the controllers when the state or the widget that you're building them in goes out of scope. So here we just override dispose, we put in tab controller dot dispose and then scroll view controller dot dispose. And this will properly dispose of our controllers. And then if a new state object comes into scope, it will then instantiate a new set of controllers for us. All right, so now let's go down into the scaffold down here and let's start building out this new page. Down inside of this scaffold, we'll create what's called a nested scroll view. This will allow us to have a few different scroll views inside of this scroll view. We need to give this a controller, so we'll attach our scroll view controller to it. This nested scroll view also has a property called header sliver builder. This allows us to build the header for this nested scroll view. So in our case, it will be our quote unquote app bar. The callback for this property takes in the build context and then it takes in a boolean which basically asks the question of whether or not we have scrolled up or down. For this header sliver builder, we want to return a list of widgets. So this is a builder that actually creates a list of widgets rather than just a single widget. And because we want an app bar, we'll put a sliver app bar inside of this. So since we're working with slivers, we want to stay with slivers for the most part. So we're going to use the sliver app bar rather than just the normal app bar. 
Inside of our sliver app bar, I'm gonna put in a title and then I'll put pinned and floated to true. And then I'll put force elevated to box is scrolled. So this is the Boolean that changes based on whether or not we've scrolled up or down. Then at the bottom of this sliver app bar, we'll build out another tab bar. And in fact, for this tab bar widget, we'll just build it out like we did before. So we have our first tab for home and then our second tab for example page. The major difference here, however, is that we're going to define our controller in here. So tab bar has a property called controller and we can push in our tab controller so that we don't have to define the default tab controller and then wrap this widget inside of it. The nested scroll view also has a body property. So we're making the body for our nested scroll view after we create the top of it, which is our sliver app bar. And for this body, we want to, of course, create our tab bar view like we did before and still put in our children, but we also want to put in the controller as well. So the tab bar view takes in a controller just as the tab bar widget does. And we want these two controllers to match in this case. Now there will be some cases where you might want two separate controllers for these widgets, but for the most part, those are fairly niche examples. All right, so now let's look at our application. So you can see here, it looks a lot like what we had before. We can tab between the two pages still, but now we can also scroll up and down inside of our application. And you can see here, as we scroll up, the actual sliver app bar disappears. And we can do this with both of our pages. So if I scroll up on the example page and then go to the home page, it still stays scrolled. So this is pretty useful if you want to have some kind of functionality here. Maybe when you scroll up, you have like a bar that pops up here that allows you to do other things. Something like that could be fairly useful in certain types of applications. Now let's come down and restructure our pages. So for page one, what I'm going to do is create a center put in a column and then in the column we'll put in our three different photos and we'll make it so that the widths of these photos are of 200 pixels in size so that they can all fit on the page. For page two, I'm actually going to borrow a piece of code from a previous tutorial. This is the code to create an infinite list view. So you can see here we have our list view builder. We define the item extent at 250 pixels. And then we have our item builder, which builds out a container. It has some padding. And then inside of our containers, we have material with some elevation and a border radius. And then the color for each of our materials rotates based on the number of the index. If the index is even, then we have cyan. And if the index is odd, then we have orange. And then inside of it, we'll create a center, put in the text, and then we can specify the actual index as a string so that we can see what index each of the tiles is. So this will allow us to scroll this list infinitely. And in the example that we use this code in, we had a frictionless list view. This time, however, we do not have those scroll physics inside of this example. So first let's take a look at page number one. So here are some fairly interesting things to note about the way this page works. If we scroll up, you can see that the space between the photographs actually gets larger. That's because we're using this main axis alignment space evenly for the column. If we change it to space around, you can see when I scroll up, this one almost stays still and the other ones sort of raise up further than they did before. And then for space between, this one does stay in place whereas the other ones go further up the actual scroll axis. We can of course change this to center end or start and then it will combine all of the images like this and make it so that they have a consistent amount of space between one another. This type of behavior could be fairly useful for very specific user interfaces and it's something to keep in mind. If we come over to our example page or page two, we've got our infinite scroll here. And as we scroll up it, you can see that the app bar shrinks as it normally would. And then we can continue to scroll all the way down. And when we go in the opposite direction, the app bar doesn't appear until we hit the end of the list here. Now that we've set up our user interface and we've set up the controllers, 
let's create a floating action button which will allow us to manipulate the controllers. So here we'll just make our floating action button with icons, icons control point, and then the on pressed will call to our controllers. These controllers have fairly interesting properties attached to them. So for instance, with our tab controller, we can call this animate to method. We can specify which tab we want to animate to. In this case, I've chosen tab one. And then we need to specify the curve that this animation should follow. And I've chosen this curves bounce in and out. And then a duration that it should take for the animation to complete. If we go back into our application and I click the floating action button, you'll see that it will automatically move over to the second page. And that's because our tab index is zero indexed. So tab number one is actually page number two. If we're already on page two and we click the button, nothing will happen. But if we go back to home and then we click the button, you can see here that it will navigate over to example page and we can slow it down considerably. I put it at 10 seconds here and you can see that when I click the button, this white thing doesn't get all the way over here until those 10 seconds have elapsed. The scroll view controller also has an animate to method that we can call. Like with the tab controller animate to function, we want to specify a double offset. And this is the position that we want the scroll controller to actually scroll to when we click this button. The scroll controller comes with some specific properties that we can use. In this case, we can use the max scroll offset and we can use the min scroll offset. So the max scroll offset is how far the scroll controller can go and then the min scroll offset is where it starts from. Then we need to set up the duration like we did with the tab controller animate two, and then we want to set up the curve as well. So if we start at home and I click the button, you can see that it actually tabs over to example and it scrolls up so that the actual sliver app bar disappears completely. And if I'm just on example page and I hit the button, you'll see it just scrolls up and removes the sliver app bar. So that's the max scroll extent of our scroll view controller in this case. The app bar starts from here and comes down to about here. And that's where the actual scroll view is located in this case. So even though this body here also scrolls, it is not controlled by this particular scroll controller. Now imagine if I scroll the list down quite a bit, say to 27, and then I change this so that we can scroll back to the min scroll extent rather than the max scroll extent. If I hit the button, you'll see that the actual list will scroll all the way down before the app bar comes down. And this is because this scroll view up here can't scroll down until this list here has hit its end. So even though this scroll controller doesn't control the second page's scroll view, it still needs to have it scroll up before it can scroll up the scroll view that it does control. If we come back up to our init state function, we can also define where we want our scroll controller to start from. And in here we can define a double. So I've put in 300 pixels. And if we look in our application, you can see that it actually starts scrolled up. So say you wanted to have the app bar automatically scrolled for whatever reason, you could do it this way. If we want to, we can actually expand the height of the sliver app bar by specifying the expanded height for it. So I've put in 500.0 pixels and you can see the app bar now takes up almost all of the screen and it still scrolls up like it normally would, except it has to scroll up a larger distance. We can make this expanded height fairly large. You can see here I've put in 20,000 pixels and there's no overflow. So if we reset our initial scroll offset to 0, 0.0 and then reload the application, you can see that the actual app bar starts completely extended. If we come down to where we have this animate to method, we can make it so that it will scroll to the max scroll extent. And then when we hit the button here, it will scroll all the way up within a second because that's the duration that we've set up. So it scrolled 20,000 pixels in a second. If we don't want to use the animate to function and we don't want an animation, we can use the jump to function. 
So we put in our scroll controller here and then we can put in jump two. This just takes in a double and I'm just putting in the min scroll extent. So here if I push up the app bar and then I click the button here, it will automatically and instantaneously extend everything out. And if I make the expanded height say 2000 pixels and just click the button, you'll see that it's literally instantaneous. So this is pretty cool. So interestingly enough, the tab controller does not have a jump to method like the scroll controller. And even if we go and we decrease the duration on the animate to function, it will hit a soft cap. The tab controller can only go so fast from one tab to the next. So for instance, in here, we're on the home page, and if I click the button, you can see that is the actual fastest speed that the tab controller will animate this tab in. So it won't go any faster than this unless we go in and override the tab ourselves and customize it. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the tutorial, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.